Perfect. Just waiting for attendees to log in. Vamos a comenzar en unos próximos minutos. Ahorita estamos esperando que todos los que están participando uh, estén llegando. Just waiting for attendees to log in. Vamos a comenzar en unos próximos. There it is, so it's working. We will get started in about three minutes. Vamos a comenzar en tres minutos. Okay, and Alex, would you like to uh, make a statement? Uh, ahorita vamos a preguntarle a la, a la señora que lo va a ayudar a interpretar, que dé un anuncio para interpretación. Thank you so much. So good afternoon, everybody. In order to provide language access, we will be providing interpretation into Spanish and also into English. We might have some remarks in Spanish. So if you're bilingual, you do not have to press anything. If, if you, actually, if you are bilingual, you do not have to press anything. If you're not bilingual in English and Spanish, you will have to select the language that you speak in order to hear the interpretation. If you're on a PC or on a laptop, look for the globe icon on the bottom right that says interpretation and select English. Or if you're on an iPad or your phone, locate the three dot menu on the top right, click on language interpretation and then select English. Buenas tardes a todos. Esta reunión contará con interpretación simultánea en español. Si usted es bilingüe, no tiene que presionar nada. Si usted no es bilingüe, tendrá que elegir su idioma para escuchar la interpretación. Si está usando una computadora, va a ver un icono en la parte de abajo de su pantalla a la, a la derecha en forma de globo que dice interpretación. Haga clic ahí y seleccione español. O si está usando un iPad o el teléfono, busque el menú de tres puntos que aparece arriba. Haga clic en interpretación de idiomas y luego elija español. Muchas gracias. Okay, you can assign me now. Okay, assigning you to Spanish. Okay, okay. Muy, bien. muy bien. Thank you. All right, we'll get started in just one minute. And uh, while we get started, let me see if I can share a video that was created by one of our students uh, that kind of just captured our first ever back to school drive through. So let me see if I can get that going. There it is. Just a little, uh, we were really happy to do a uh, back to school drive through and have our students uh, an opportunity to just engage with uh, our teachers uh, in a drive through type of way. And uh, also created an opportunity for PTA to be there and uh, a few members of the dance team uh, who got an opportunity to show their, their school spirit. 
Um, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and um, start the presentation and share my screen again. Excellent. Well, welcome to Goleta Valley Junior High's Back to School Night in a virtual setting. And so we are so glad to see you all here today and thank you for joining us. Um, at this time, uh, before we begin, um, if you could please uh, join me in a moment of silence in memory of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who passed away um, this past Friday. Uh, she was the second uh, female to serve on the U.S. Supreme Court and uh, passed away due to cancer complications. So in honor of her legacy, um, we ask you to please join us in one minute of silence. Thank you for that. Um, at this time, I would like to now lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. If you could all put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Um, and so at this time, I want to just take the moment to welcome you all to our first ever back to school night uh, in a virtual setting. And so um, it is an honor for you all to join us. And with that, we have some distinguished guests joining us today that I want to begin by introducing you all. And so uh, starting from the top left, we have some Santa Barbara Unified board members. So beginning with uh, Laura Capps, board president. And uh, I'm gonna pause just a little bit just so they can say a quick hello and a, and a brief welcome. So uh, Ms. Laura Capps. Thank you, Principal Ortega. It's nice to be with everybody. I'll keep it really quick. I just wanna say as a, as a mom and, and a president of the school board, uh, hello to all the Mariners. And to say, you know, for 56 years, we've been doing back to school nights at Goleta Valley Junior High. This is the most unique. Uh, it's the most challenging perhaps, but we're gonna do it. We're getting through it with the strength and the spirit and the collaboration of I can, you know, of this evening and what we're all just doing. We're doing our best. It's an all hands on deck moment here in our human history. And your school board is working hard to make sure that students get back to class safely. That's the key. And so I just want, I wanted to be here tonight to just especially say welcome and thank you. Thank you, board president. And uh, next, I'd like to introduce Dr. Jacqueline Reed, who is our board vice president. Yes, and please call me Jackie. And I'm going to say, go Mariners. Woo! I mean, OK, here we are in this weird, challenging, strange kind of situation. But I want to first thank um, Principal Ortega for this opportunity to be here today. And I want to thank the parents and students for being here and so important to engage in the school experience, no matter what the situation is, though it's challenging for sure. Um, I want to do a special call out to all of the teachers and the administrative staff for all the amazing work and preparation you have done to prepare to, to pull off 
this this new normal, this new normal that we're living. And and this and also to know you've been working so diligently, and we know that to make this all go smoothly. But we also know there's just going to be some hiccups. There's going to be changes. There's going to be situations that arise. Um, and there's we have to be nimble. We have to be ready to move and be fluid in those changes. And my number one priority, as was um, spoken by Ms. Capps, our board president, is to get everyone back safely and healthy back into the classroom when it is the appropriate time because face-to-face -face learning is the most optimum situation for for our students so um i could go on and on but i'll stop there because i'm sure mr otega would like me to to um close my message but i would just say i'm thrilled to be here i support all of you and as a liaison to the community and to the district please feel free to, to reach out to me should you have any questions, concerns, and certainly if you wanna send something positive and tell me about what great is going on because I know there is a lot of great things going on here. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Reed. And uh, last joining us today is uh, board member Kate Ford, Ms. Ford. Oh, thank you so much. Good evening, Goleta Valley Mariners, and welcome, as my colleagues have said, to the 2020-21 school year. I am Kate Ford, member of the school board. Yes, it is an honor to be with you tonight. It's one of those historic nights, the first back to school night for your school on Zoom, and hopefully the last. And it's a perfect reminder that we must work really hard as a community to get back to school in person. Um, which we miss so much. I was a junior high teacher for 10 years and a junior high principal for 10 years. So I know how much everyone wants to get back to those wonderful experiences and activities and relationships that in-person school offers. I'm just also so grateful to all of you, especially the students who are just giving distance learning their best shot to the parents who are being so gracious and helpful with their kids and also the teachers. And a special thank you to the teachers and the staff who truly are the pioneers of education today. And of course, thank you to Mr. Ortega and his team for working like crazy to keep things up and running. So I wish you a powerful and exciting school year, whether distance or in person or in between. And I really hope to see you in person soon. Thank you, board members. Uh, really appreciative for you all to join us tonight. Um, and uh, now I want to go ahead and just uh, quickly introduce you all to some Santa Barbara Unified School District cabinet. Um, we couldn't do the work that we do here at GV without their support and all their support. And so I'll go ahead and begin first with our Assistant Superintendent of Secondary Education, Sean Carey. Thank you, Principal Ortega. I'll first just extend on behalf of our new superintendent, Hilda Maldonado her best wishes uh, for an optimal year. I'll borrow that, that word from earlier. Um, so she's sorry she's not with you tonight, but she wanted, to me extend the, wanted me to extend those sentiments on her behalf. And then I'll just briefly add for my own part that having been present at your drive-through promotion in the spring, which is probably not true for most families tuning in, although I bet it's true for a few, um, but, but certainly for the staff, it's wonderful to see that opening video of the drive-through uh, materials distribution um, because it just shows how you are sailing on, Mariners. Thanks for having me tonight. Have a great night. Uh, thank you for that pun, Ms. Carey. Um, moving on, uh, we have our Director of Emergent Multilingual Learners and Parent Engagement, uh, Maria Larios Horton. Muchas gracias, Director uh, Ortega. Buenas Never. tardes, lindas familias y estudiantes de la secu secundaria Goleta Valley. Mi nombre, como dijo el director, es María Larios Horton y soy su directora de programas para alumnos multilingües emergentes y participación familiar. Les deseo un feliz inicio de año escolar, recordándoles que estamos para apoyarles, para que nuestros estudiantes tengan todo el éxito posible. Un ejemplo del apoyo que damos a nuestras escuelas, la están viendo hoy mismo. Nuestra unidad de acceso lingüístico está proveyendo a la interpretación para esta tarde para nuestras familias, así que les agradecemos a nuestra unidad de, de, perdón, de uh, acceso lingüístico. 
Y pues con esto les dejo uh, con un agradecimiento al director y los maestros, los docentes y todo el personal de apoyo de su escuela. Y uh, termino con decir, ¡vamos marineros! Gracias. Okay. Muchas gracias. Uh, yeah, we are so appreciative of the language access unit that uh, our director of parent engagement and emerging multilingual learners has provided to us. It's a uh, talk about capacity building and the ability for a full on team to be able to support our families who um, need that support uh, in time of need. So next we have um, El Jefe of Educational uh, Technology Officer, Todd Rickman. How to call you El Jefe. Appreciate it. Um, it's such a pleasure to be here, uh, Principal Ortega. I am the uh, proud parent of uh, three former very proud uh, Mariners. Uh, so I know firsthand the quality uh, education that students receive uh, at your school and the wonderful staff that's here. Uh, I wish everybody just a great year. And um, it's like I said, it's just an honor to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. And last but not least, um, Superintendent of Student Services, Dr. Fran Wagenek. Uh, good evening, Mariners. Um, I'm thinking especially right now of our seventh grade families who are new, not just to Goleta Valley Junior High, but new to our district. Those coming from GUSD and HOPE and perhaps other of our partner districts. Um, we are definitely, as others have said, looking forward to the day when you can be on campus at Goleta Valley. I had the pleasure of working there for two years uh, in the early part of this century and um, know what a special place it is. Um, I was a sea monkey and if you don't know what the uh, houses are, I, I always claim my fidelity to the sea monkeys. So um, it's great to be here tonight to join in with all of you. And I'm so excited to see some of these familiar faces um, of the administration and counselors and, and other staff at Goleta Valley. So thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, yes, yeah, certainly when I think about um, everyone joining us here tonight, um, I do remember Mr. Rickman and uh, his kiddos coming through. And uh, I, I do hear the stories of uh, Dr. Wagenek giving me stories about uh, how wonderful GB uh, was when she was here. And, uh, you know, I, I, as I was talking, you know, I do have the, the houses behind me and I, I, I've, I've got an easy access to books, but um, I really like these authors, uh, Chip Heath and Dan Heath. And this one's called Switch, but I'm gonna reference a different book that I like about them. And that is a, a book about the power of moments. And uh, we begin to think about what are those moments that we share and the moments that we remember. And we remember the, the moments of the rites of passage. We remember promotion, um, the big band that takes place, uh, the band concerts. Um, the events that take place throughout the holidays um, and events like back to school night. And uh, I, I want you to know that whether we are in distance learning or uh, hybrid or back when we eventually transition to everyone back at school, uh, I always have that in the mind frame in terms of what are those moments that we are going to create for our students. And uh, I, I try to work with that every single day and I will say that uh, our assemblies were the first ever that we did here at GV. And uh, we did some virtual assemblies and, and, and they were truly wonderful uh, being able to facilitate them and taking a, a school-wide group of 768 students and being able to break them up and also being able to do breakout groups with them uh, to the point where we were able to meet with them and, and listen to them. On a, on, a, on a group level of about one to seven ratio of adult to student. And uh, just a powerful moment that I'll remember. And uh, I really hope that our students take those moments as well. Uh, but we'll try to create more as we go along throughout the year. Um, and so with that, I do wanna share with you who we are, what we do and individuals that are behind the scenes today uh, ready to answer your questions and um, really 
ready to give you some feedback. And so do take time to ask questions in the Q&A. Uh, we will try to answer some of those questions as much as we can throughout the presentation today. And uh, any questions we don't answer, we'll go ahead and get back to you. Um, but joining us today is, um, I'll start first with our administrative team, um, starting with Ms. Chu Merritt. She's our assistant principal and uh, she oversees curriculum and instruction and special ed, but um, I'll just allow her to just uh, say a few words, Ms. Chu. Good evening, everybody. It is so great to be here tonight with you, even in this virtual setting. So thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your evening to join us. Um, we're excited to share some information with you. Um, so I'll speak to you a little bit more further in the program. Also joining us is Mr. Sportel, Dean of Student Engagement. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we have a lot of uh, very fun things prepared for you, and I'm really excited to see what the teachers have got. Uh, thanks again for coming tonight, and any questions that you might have, just put them into the chat or the Q&A. We'll be happy to answer those for you. Great. And from our counseling team as a panelist, uh, Ms. Cabrera. Good evening to all. Buenas noches a todos. Um, I'll be sharing a little bit more about our counseling program in a few minutes. Thank you. And Ms. Ricardo. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm just happy to be here and, and happy to have you guys here. You'll hear a little bit more about our counseling program. And Ms. De Carmo. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Raquel Del Carmo and I am a school-based counselor with FSA. This is my third year at the school and I'm also the parent of a um, former Mariner. So I'm really happy to be returning to continue supporting the mental health needs of students, families and the staff as needed. And from the list that you see here, also joining us today is Ms. Hatcherday. Hello everyone, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Can't wait to share more about the library. And thank you, Mr. Ortega, for our first book recommendation of the evening. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also you see here are Ms. Becchio and Mr. Lozano. Uh, really, I put all of these groups here because we are the front office. We are here to support you uh, with anything that you need, whether it's related to curriculum, safety, um, some accountability or learning. Uh, we are here to support you and just wanted you to connect a, a, a face to the title of each individual that, that is here throughout the week. Um, also joining us today, um, our support staff, uh, Ms. Gonzalez, our office manager, Ms. Gonzalez. Hi everyone, welcome to Galita Valley. And uh, a new position that came about uh, really in conversations with our ELAC, um, our English Learner um, Committee, um, Mr. Ricardo Mata Vasquez. Mr. Ricardo. Muy buenas noches, familias. Gracias por estar aquí con nosotros. Uh, yo soy el coordinador de alcance para estudiantes y familias. Aquí su servicio. Si tiene cualquier pregunta, por favor, no dude contactarme. Great. Thank you. So he is our youth and family outreach. And so he's out there trying to uh, reach out to families and connect them with our school. Uh, if there's ever a need or you need something, you need to uh, learn how to navigate a particular system, need help with anything here at school, uh, do reach out to us and do reach out to uh, Mr. Mata Vasquez. Um, I also have Ms. Uh, Sanchez, who's not with us, but she is a secretary that supports Ms. Chu and Mr. Sportel. Uh, Ms. Spencer, um, you all know by now, uh, she's our registrar, but also our counseling secretary. So if you need to set up an appointment, please uh, feel free to email her and connect with uh, one of our counselors or email our counselors directly. Um, and also Ms. Lopez, who's our attendance clerk. Um, I went ahead and sent uh, on Parent Square just general information about how to go ahead and work with attendance. And so if you ever see a need where uh, your child might not be able to participate in distance learning activities, uh, do email uh, Ms. Lopez or call her, leave her a message. So that way we could excuse that absence. Um, and also Ms. Cunningham, she is our uh, registered nurse here at GV and uh, she supports our students here and also supports uh, with our students with special needs. So 
Um, this right here is one of my favorite slides. And, and, and I start with it because it, it's what grounds us. It, it's what connects us. It's what is uh, embedded within our framework. And I, I really like us all to begin where, where we are and why we exist here at GB. Um, and this is true for not just our students, but also for our staff, uh, but, and also for our community. Uh, why are we here? We are here to ensure safety, accountability, inclusion, and learning. And so in a little while, I'm gonna talk more about that in terms of what that looks like with our school-wide expectations. Uh, but at the core, uh, we even created a little acronym there of SAIL. Um, as you know, one of our other uh, symbols is a galleon. And uh, we, we need SAILs because it guides us to rough terrain. It guides us to the rough seas. And uh, we are living through unprecedented time. And uh, just remembering the why and how we carry about our business here at GV, which is the business of learning, the business of building relationships, uh, the business of really just getting through this year together uh, is why we're here. And, and with that, it ties into our vision, which is that we really look at our students, all Goleta Valley Junior High Mariners as engaged learners. And engage has multiple avenues. Uh, that is from attendance to designing lessons to really figuring out how are we going to create these memorable experience for our students? How are we going to engage in um, really building the leadership of our students with the Associated Student Body, ASB, uh, and guiding that path to clubs, groups, so that way our students can start building connections with each other uh, and make it a year that uh, they are taking control of their own learning, but also taking control of the year as well. Uh, culturally aware and productive citizens in the 21st century global community. Uh, really looking at our world as it stands and trying to understand uh, how the various different dynamics exist and coexist, uh, but also really focusing and zeroing in on communication, collaboration, the critical thinking, uh, and our creativity. All those components uh, are ones that we think about. Those are the ones that we talk about. Um, and we try to identify what are those values uh, that really will allow our students and ourselves to really engage with our vision uh, so that way we can meet our mission. And that is the value of respect, the value of innovation, uh, the value of lifelong learning, uh, just that idea of a growth mindset, which we'll talk a little more about, uh, the value of goal setting, um, and the value of equity. Um, how do we guarantee access for every student? How do we identify gaps that we see in student learning? How do we identify gaps that we see in access to technology? And just make she, making sure that we are able to provide that support for our students. And at, at the heart of how we measure all this is through our goal of higher order thinking. Um, we here collaborate with our professional learning communities and the goal of higher order thinking is really that goal of rigor. Uh, we wanna create a rigorous distance learning environment, but rigor overall, whether we're in distance learning, hybrid, or just at here at school in brick and mortar. And that rigor and also that depth and complexity, uh, all those are key. Uh, I always bring back the example of uh, a story that we read, um, that I read to my children, uh, who are in second grade, and I have been reading to them uh, ever since they've been in kindergarten about the day that the crayons quit, uh, but really helping them to identify and analyze uh, what are their favorite colors. Um, then as they get older, trying to identify uh, why certain crayons are unhappy. Uh, it's really a story about uh, crayons being unhappy about their uh, author not using them a lot. Uh, but at the core of that is understanding that depth and complexity can exist at any grade level. Uh, it's not a, a matter of waiting to see when a student is in eighth grade to see if we can engage in a higher order thinking of depth and complexity, uh, of deeper learning uh, of, a, of a subject uh, and a skill that we identify in a standard. And so 
We combine all of these. I spend a lot of time on this because it's really true to who we are uh, and what we believe in, and it's what we do. Uh, this is what we're about, and this is the type of work that we engage in every single day. Uh, at the core of that is preparing students for a world that is yet to be created. Uh, we've identified that as a mission to Santa Barbara Unified, uh, and no more is that true than the world in which we're living in right now. So uh, these are our school-wide uh, expectations, and uh, I really, uh, Mr. Sportell, are you there right now? I am, yes. All right, I'm going to have Mr. Sportell just speak a little bit in terms of what this means in terms of our school-wide expectations that we went over with our students. Take it away, Thank Mr. You. Sportell. Thank you, Mr. Ortega. Uh, here at uh, Goleta Valley, we are very fortunate to have um, our theme of Mariners, and that comes from uh, the name of our town, Goleta, which is actually a boat in Spanish, and that is why we have this name. And what we have been able to do is use this acronym of SAIL, S-A-I-L, to help us organize and remember all of the expectations we have for ourselves as mariners. And um, I might include that that is not uh, only for students, that refers to all of us who work here and uh, teachers, administrators, and everybody here. We want to always consider our actions in terms of how they affect the feeling of safety here at the school. And as you can see through some of these other uh, more specific bullet points, these are the practices that guide us in, in how we consider safety. And if we can move on to our next letter, accountability. How do I uh, show by my actions that I consider myself to be accountable to myself and others? And these are some of the ways that we, some basic ways that we show our accountability. And the way that this uh, format works is the idea that we're constantly referring back to these standards of how we conduct ourselves and the questions though, the guiding questions that we ask ourselves upon reflection. After accountability, we have the I for inclusive and the ideals that we aspire to in terms of inclusion and to help guide our students and our staff into what does this feel like? Is this uh, go along with my feeling of what it feels like to be in included? Is this what it is like to be um, my feel? How does this jive with my feelings of, of being excluded? We all know what that feels like. And what we want to do is, is guide our students in learning about and thinking about all the time, how do we affect the feelings of inclusion with others? And for our final slide, I wanted to invite Ms. Chu to uh, talk about learners. Yes, thank you. So learning is definitely what we are all about here at Goleta Valley Junior High. And it's something that we aspire to make accessible for all all students. So we really want students to approach every experience that they have with a mindset that they are growing, they are learning. So if they're not there yet, they are working their way there. And we want to encourage them, especially right now in the distance learning environment, to really think about what their part is to be able to come to the learning space and be ready to actively engage and get everything that they possibly can out of that setting. So we are continually through teachers, through ways that we're supporting our students, reminding them, reminding of them of that and helping equip them with what they need to be able to do that. So all areas of preparing for their class as well as when they're in their Zoom sessions, um, supporting them in the ways that they need to be supported so that they can contribute and really feel a part of that learning environment and be actively engaged in that learning. Thank you, Ms. Chu. And uh, I just want to highlight that uh, the piece of growth mindset is incredibly important to us because we know that not every student is going to understand concepts right away. Uh, but the, at the heart of that is learning from mistakes and, and really taking the position of, you may not understand it right now, um, but it's always a not yet. It's never a, 
you fail and you will never understand it again. And so it's that shift in mindset that we're really looking in our students uh, because we do want them to be agents of their own learning. And to be agents of your own learning, it does require that element of being reflective, uh, being able to identify which of the key areas that uh, one may not have understood, uh, and then being able to learn from it. And so we're constantly engaging in what we call cycles of inquiry, uh, which are those cycles of identifying what is the lesson design that teachers are going to create, um, have the students really engage in the learning experience, and then afterwards, teachers collect evidence of student learning, kind of try to identify gaps in student learning, and then redesign a lesson to see how we can help students uh, meet those uh, tasks that are really a, at a higher order level thinking, uh, which is that depth and complexity that I was referencing. So um, I, I have shared this before in previous webinars, uh, but I will share it again in, in terms of what this looks like throughout the, the school week. Uh, on a Monday, the schedule uh, is a little different. Uh, so it's a shorter schedule uh, and students do start with zero period. Uh, and then they go in through all six periods and including seventh period uh, throughout that day. So they're shorter. Uh, but it is a, a form of a check-in for teachers, is a form of getting ready for the week. Uh, and it also includes uh, independent reading for students uh, as part of a homework assignment afterwards, uh, really just to get into that independent reading um, goal that the English teachers have assigned throughout the year. Moving along on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, it is more of a block style schedule. And so these learning experiences can include uh, what we call synchronous learning, which is face-to-face, -face, uh, real-time, or asynchronous learning, which is uh, independent work. And so what is true about this is that whether it's synchronous or asynchronous, uh, our teachers are available for our students throughout that whole time period. And so it, it's really important for our kiddos to understand that, for our families to understand that, so that you're able to support them. Uh, in addition to that, they have office hours, uh, that are outside of these periods. Uh, some teachers have them before school, others have them uh, right around lunch, um, and others have them um, at the end of the day. And so uh, we've asked our teachers to kind of identify at least two office periods, so that way they're not just during lunch um, or just in the morning. Uh, this will ensure that students do have ample opportunities to get their lunch if they have to travel to one of the grab and go sites. Um, if you notice on Thursdays, that is when we are engaging in our goal. Um, that is when we are engaging in our vision. That's when we're engaging in our values. That's when we're engaging in our whole mission as a whole. And that is uh, really collectively bringing everyone together and really factoring in those cycles of inquiry, really factoring in student learning, uh, but really learning. Uh, we are lifelong learners at the stands. We do not want to uh, just be having a fixed mindset, uh, we would be in really big trouble right now if, if we all had a fixed mindset. And so we all have um, lifelong learning embedded in us and it's kind of what we do and also what we try to infuse upon our students as well. Um, shifting it in, in terms of, uh, you know, the schedule was a beauty when you have a brick and mortar because uh, lunchtime really created those opportunities for our students to come together, uh, really engage in clubs, um, groups, and um, just build relationships with each other. And uh, we're missing that right now. And one of the things that we are aiming and thriving to do is bringing back that piece of sale, but also relationships at the core of what we do. And so we are heading into election season with our ASB. Um, we were not able to get elections going last year with our eighth graders, um, seventh graders who would be eighth graders. And so they are current eighth graders now, and we are going to engage them in an election process. And then our seventh graders will go through an election process in the spring so that they can select um, their ASB officers for the following year. Uh, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and um, have Mr. Sportell and Ms. Rachel Hatcher Day kind of just talk about those plans and what those will look like uh, in the coming weeks. Mr. Sportell? Yes, thank you. Uh, if you may have noticed in our most recent uh, Parent Square update, we did begin our election process. So we have uh, 
several, uh, quite a few students who've applied to run for office. And what we will be uh, doing now is uh, vetting those candidates. On Wednesday of this week, we'll be announcing on Student Square and Parent Square who the candidates are for this year. And then the campaigns will begin shortly thereafter. By next Thursday and Friday, we will begin the elections and we'll have our new um, ASB officers in place by the end of next week um, and announcing them the following week. And then we get to get started on our ASB meetings, which we've been missing greatly. Uh, through the ASB meeting process with these students who are our representatives, we will be able to begin um, in earnest work with our clubs and any fundraising activities and events and activities that we have here at school. So we got off to a little bit of a slow start without having ASB officers this year, but we're really looking forward to ramping up quickly in the next few weeks. And uh, we have two ASB advisors this year. We have um, Ms. Courtney Vaccaro and Ms. Uh, Hatcher Day, who you'll be uh, seeing very shortly here is gonna talk a little bit about the library and what we have going on with that. Great, thank you. Ms. Hatcher Day. Hello again, everyone. Um, as Mr. Sportel said, I'm one of the ASB advisors this year and I'm excited to have our elections so we can get going with ASB so I can support our student leaders. That being said, I am also the advisor of the yearbook, one of the clubs that will start up once our ASB officers are elected. And we will have a yearbook this year. It will definitely look different than yearbooks in the past, but I know none of us will be surprised by the unique and innovating ways that our students will um, express the year through the yearbook. So now I want to transition to talking about the library and our goals and programs for this year. The library um, is not just our physical library space with our print materials. We also have a maker space with machines and materials for crafts and arts and tech tools. Um, and though our makerspace is closed right now to students in person, there are some ways that we are encouraging our GV makers during distance learning. And I'll talk more about that. But our library is also a digital hub for our campus. So everything that our library has done um, and will be doing is also available on our digital virtual library space at GVJHS library.org, which you can get to from our gvjh.org homepage. So what's going on in the library this year? Well, we have two main goals for the fall. The first is that our students will see themselves as digital library users. This doesn't mean that they're just going to be reading on a screen. Students can elect to put books or print books on hold and come pick them up during sidewalk services. And this is a mirror of what the public libraries are doing right now. Students can come before school or during lunch to pick up their books and their grownups can come um, anytime from 8 to 2.30 p.m. to pick up books. One, our second goal is that students learn to express themselves. And this really incorporates um, our first rule of punk fall book club and our maker kits. And we want this to be a way um, to have students give them the opportunity to socialize and connect. We wanna elevate student voices and we want them to be able to reflect on the cultural and linguistic diversity that they bring to our school. So for that, we have maker kits that we are giving out um, during sidewalk services. We've done a coloring kit and now we will transition to a zine kit. And many people ask, what is a zine? A zine is a miniature self-published magazine and it can be on anything that a student is interested in. And that coincides with our fall book club. And I just wanna say a big thank you for everyone who donated copies of The First Rule of Punk by Celia C. Perez to our students. It really shows the students how much uh, they are valued when they are given a book 
to keep um, and that our school community says this is important um, and we value you and your libraries and reading for yourself. Um, so the first rule of punk book club, you can still sign up if you want to on our website. We will have a zine making sesh and we will be um, listening to Mexican punk music playlists that the author has created. And then in about a week's time in November, we'll get to meet the author. And we're really excited for her to focus on talking to students about um, expressing themselves. So. Thank you for your donations. If you have any questions, you can always contact me and all of this information is on our website. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ms. Hatcher Day. All right, um, now I wanna just take a few minutes to really uh, have our counselors talk about our counseling program here at GV. Uh, we pride ourselves in the work that we've been doing over the course of the last three years under the direction of our Assistant Superintendent of Student Services, uh, Fran Wagenek. Um, I'll have Ms. Uh, Cabrera talk a little bit about that. Ms. Cabrera and Ms. Ricardo. Thank you, Mr. Ortega. And again, I am Ms. Cabrera, one of two school counselors um, here at Goleta Valley Junior High. And all students are assigned a school counselor according to their last name. And if your student has two last names, it's based on the first. Um, we did do a little bit of an adjustment with the alphabet. So um, my caseload is all students whose last names begin with A all the way through LOP. So um, the L group was a big group this year. Um, one of the things that I wanna highlight tonight is that the school counseling team takes a lot of pride in providing direct services to students across the ASCA national model domains in order to promote mindsets and behaviors that enhance the learning process and create a culture of college and career readiness. Now, I know you're all about to flood the Q&A with what does ASCA mean? Well, ASCA is the American School Counselor Association. And the ASCA model essentially is a framework for delivering a comprehensive student-centered counseling program across three domains. And those three domains are the academic domain, personal social domain, and college and career domain. So I really just encourage you to visit our webpage um, on our website um, under the academics tab uh, for more information about the school counseling program. And Mrs. Ricardo is gonna highlight um, just uh, something else that your student can access there as well. All right, hello everyone. Um, I am Miss Ricardo, and my caseload, as Miss Cabrera mentioned, uh, did change a little bit this year. So I'm covering students with last names of L O R through Z. And one of the things we are excited to promote and to tell you about is our virtual counseling corner, our office. Um, so we have a lot of different resources where all students could um, explore. Um, one of our biggest goals uh, this year is to keep con the connection going with our students. And so in the center of the page, you will find a place where students could actually go and request an appointment with Ms. Cabrera or myself. Um, other things that you'll find here are just resources about career, college exploration, study skills, various things. Um, Mr. Ortega, can you show the next slide, please? Another cool um, resource we have this year is our wellness space. Um, as you all know, um, we are encouraging everyone, students, adults, everyone to practice a lot of self-care. And because of that, we did create a self, a, well, a wellness space where we have different resources um, that you along with your students will benefit from. Um, so we encourage all students and families to please take the time to explore. Um, all of this you are able to find under our website. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. All right, um, so. 
you're all here. And uh, really what, uh, what I ask of you all is to see in what area you can um, stay engaged and involved in school activities, whether it's taking part in PTA, um, whether it's uh, taking part in school side council, which uh, we're glad we have three members this year. Um, and so we have those positions filled, um, but those positions do become available again uh, next year. Um, and also we have the Staff Special Education Parent Advisory Committee, uh, which we call CPAC, um, and also the English Learner Advisory Council. And so um, I'll start first with our PTA president, um, Ms. Tina Brenza, who will talk a little bit about PTA, and then we'll talk a little bit about CPAC and ELAC. Ms. Tina Brenza. All right. Hello. Welcome, everyone. And wanted to start out with you know, the comment that PTA has been connecting families, schools, and communities for over 120 years. Thank you to those of you who have already joined. We hope more of you will join as well to provide a voice on issues affecting our children and families and to participate in an educational partnership with administrators and teachers. Everyone, everyone and anyone can join. It's only $12 um, per membership. Uh, parents, caregivers, teachers, staff, grandparents. You can join online at the school's website under PTA. There's a link there. Um, or there are forms in the office, in the school office. Joining the PTA supports efforts to improve the education of children and the lives and the lives of their families. So on behalf of 3.5 million members, National PTA communicates with Congress and administration about issues impacting children, families, and schools. The recently um, passed resolutions pertain to mental health care and vaping. And studies show that children experience greater success when parents are involved in their education, which is what you are doing here this evening. Uh, dues are distributed between the local, state, and national levels in order to fund the most powerful children's advocacy association, PTA. Here at Goleta Valley Junior High, we support many programs and we've got a great board this year to provide these programs. We've got coffee with the principal. We provide grants to teachers to reimburse for supplies um, and we um, have appreciation luncheons. There's the Reflections Arts Program competition where um, students submit entries in categories such as dance, photography, film, music, and literature and visual arts. The theme this year is I Matter Because, and you'll be seeing um, Parent Square messages uh, regarding um, submissions and deadlines for that program. We have guest speakers at association meetings, and our first one this year will be on October 21st, uh, virtually, um, and we'll have Adam Gray speak on internet safety. Um, the other, um, other benefits of membership, the California PTA and National PTA um, on their websites. There are great resources for distance learning, STEM activities, membership perks, discounts. Um, you can sign up for their newsletters to be informed on um, their actions. And the National PTA also um, has a podcast with great topics. And uh, keep in mind, joining does not equal volunteering. We love when you can volunteer, but it's not required. Um, you can always donate to the Make a Difference campaign in addition or in place of a membership. And you can donate again on the school's website under um, the PTA link, um, or there are forms in the school office. And the Make a Difference campaign provides curriculum and classroom support. It holds students events such as the promotion party and soiree, provides student awards and school publications, um, and like Mrs. Hatcher Day already referred to the maker space, we donated substantially to that space. There's a green screen for video production, 3D printers, arts and crafts, and more. And we'll continue to add to that space. And corporate matching donations, if you give your employer the form letter that we have, many will match your donation through this program. And next slide, please. So we invite everyone to join Goleta Valley Junior High PTA because we can do more together than apart. Any questions can be sent through the Q&A or again, the web, school website um, 
The link has my email there because we're always looking for suggestions for speakers or topics for future association meetings. And so welcome to Goleta Valley Junior High. Thank you for your time and hope to see you at the October 21st association meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brenda. Um, Ms. Chu, uh, speaking a little bit, a bit about uh, dates coming up with uh, CPAC meetings. Yes, thank you, Mr. Ortega. So really briefly, I'm going to speak to that third bullet point there. Um, as part of my role as assistant principal, I oversee all of the special ed programs here at Goleta Valley Junior High. And we are very fortunate in that we serve the whole continuum of needs for our students. Um, and so if you are a parent that has a student in any of our special ed programs, I just want to extend a personal invitation to see if you would come be a part of our CPAC. And CPAC is our Staff Special Education Parent Advisory Committee. And this is a great opportunity to be connected. Uh, it takes place, as you can see there, four times a year. We have a site-based meeting. It'll be myself. Um, potentially, we have other admin attending. We have some of our special ed staff. And you as parents will make up that other part. We will come together collaboratively and share information about specific topics, have time for discussion questions and just really working together in all avenues as we um, support students in all of our special ed programs. And one other little piece of that is we have a district CPAC um, committee as well. And so we have site representatives and I just wanna give a quick shout out to Malia Moore. She is a parent of a current eighth grader. So she's continuing on with us um, from last year as one of our parent reps and she will be attending the district district meeting and sharing information as well as bringing information back to us. But we do have one more space. We would love to have another parent involved. So just if you have any questions, would like to chat more about that, please feel free to reach out to me and um, I will answer your questions and let you know what it, more about it. Great. And um, speaking a little bit about the English Learner Advisory Committee is uh, Mr. Vasquez, who's uh, really making a lot of phone calls right now, trying to get uh, a new committee going. Most of our committees graduated, so they're all at the high school now, and uh, they're all leading the way. Uh, Mr. Vasquez. Sí, muy buenas noches. Um, también tenemos un comité, un comité asesor para los padres para que vengan a mirar cuáles son las metas este año. Uh, ¿Cómo se pueden involucrar si tienen estudiantes que están en el aprendizaje del inglés? Uh, tenemos reuniones todo um, una vez al mes. Ya tenemos una reunión donde damos un poquito de información, pero vamos a tener otra orientación. Y yo les voy a dar la llamada para invitarlos a esa reunión. Gracias. Thank you, Mr. Vasquez. Yes, we have an ELAC uh, orientation meeting coming up in the near future. And so we're really looking for uh, parent leaders who can really take the the rain on that and, and help us carry about our, our ELAC committee. Thank you. All right, so um, I, I wanted right now just to kind of guide you in terms of what to do next. Uh, we are finalizing our back to school night. And so let me um, get away from this setting right here and um, start getting into where you can access the back to school night videos. And so um, I went ahead and let me just, if you're in um, an iPad or if you're on a computer, if you're on your phone, the experience will be a little different, uh, but you can still access it um, from any way you want. Um, so really what we created were, um, here's the link to the Goleta Valley Junior High back to school night. Um, another way you can find it is by clicking on, going to our website. And then uh, we created an announcement here. that says click here to access um, the Goleta Valley Junior High back to school night videos. So you can click here uh, and that will take you directly to our back to school night page. And so, what we have here is all the YouTube videos that were created by our fabulous teachers. And uh, they went ahead and created it by departments, um, some by grade level and uh, some by departments as a whole. 
And so um, what you will see in this experience, let me just go back to uh, right here. If you're on your computer, it will look something like this. Uh, you'll click on the link. And that, that will take you to um, all of our videos. And so what we have here is by departments, English, language, arts. Uh, then we have them by grade level, uh, seventh grade. All the English are on the left and all the Spanish dub videos are on the right. Um, so we have them for math. We have them for social studies, uh, seventh and eighth. Uh, we have them for science, seventh and eighth. We also have videos for physical education and also slide decks accompanying those videos. Um, the internet's kind of just buffering right now, but they are YouTube videos linked in here. Uh, we have a video for special education, industrial technology and coding, um, Spanish, world language and French, uh, music and uh, theater, avid and art. And so they're all here. Um, they do take a while to load, uh, but once loaded, you will see the YouTube videos. Um, and then once you hover over them, you can play them and you can also enlarge them. Uh, and so really important that you go through that. Uh, the links are all live and I'll also go ahead following this meeting, I will go ahead and send a parent square, uh, letting everyone know that the videos are now live. Um, so I hope you enjoy them. I know our teachers worked uh, hard trying to get them together uh, working collaboratively to kind of just give you uh, a really point of view of what GB is all about and also what the departments are focusing on. Uh, for more details, do make sure that you access the NEO page. And so that's really important uh, because that is where you will get access to the syllabi. Uh, that is where you will get access to all of the various different um, components that's included in terms of monitoring uh, student grades. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to add is that we have a few workshops coming up. Uh, we have workshops that are geared towards understanding our new tutoring software paper. Uh, there's also a workshop that we have coming up for NEO. And so I'll be messaging that out at our next um, parent weekly bulletin that goes out on Sunday. Uh, if you are not receiving our weekly bulletins, do let us know. Um, we try to just condense everything to a one-time mailer, so that way you're not receiving a bunch of parent squares from our uh, front office about the various different events. And so we try to figure out what are all the events that are going on for the week and try to condense them down for you in a digest. Uh, we will send those out uh, prior to 6 p.m. every Sunday, uh, so that way you could either read them on Sunday or read them Monday morning. Um, so with that, uh, I want to just thank you all uh, for being part of our first ever back to school night uh, through a virtual setting. And uh, this will conclude our presentation. And I know many of you had uh, questions. If we didn't get to your questions, we will make sure that we get them. Uh, so at that point, everybody jazz hands and thank you all for joining us.